You've got two speakers running now. I think it's good. Yes, we're on. Okay, finally. Sorry. Yay! It works. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Exciting start. Oof. Well, we made it. Welcome everyone to the Renegade Society Radio Show. We are finally here despite small technical difficulties. I am Sarah Erickson, Director of Sales and Marketing for Renegade. We are here with Danny Lowe, Associate Marketing Manager, as well as Scott Gaeta, owner of this exciting little enterprise we've got going on. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just stunned. <laughs> what? So, Danny, your generation is supposed to be like computer literate, <laughs> social media literate, know how to use the things, all the buttons and stuff. Yes. Yeah. I'm definitely literate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the rest of those things. Mm, okay. Uh, sure. Moving on. <laughs> oh, it's oh, always yeah. great. Being a, a little bit poke, poking a little bit of fun at our millennial, our one millennial in the office. That's right. Poking right. millennial. That's right. We, we did our part. We took one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. So what do we have on the agenda, Miss Millennial? Well, we have a lot of things. Uh, we have more technology to talk about. We just announced something very exciting. Oh, no. um, those guys that they would if we had them on here it would work hey hey it worked earlier on skype i don't know what's up with google uh -huh. <laughs> it's fine it's fine okay. um but yeah we announced a new mobile app of raiders for the north sea and that's super exciting yeah i think i can probably figure out how to use that one that's good <laughs> I can vouch for it being extremely user friendly. I got into the beta of it through Direwolf, and so I've been playing it as I've been traveling around on the plane, and it is so beautiful. Um, did anybody guys see it this weekend at PAX East? Or I'm sorry, PAX South? PAX South, yeah. Cool. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. They had it at their booth um, at PAX South and showing it off. So I know a few people got to play it, and I, I think it'll be pretty exciting when we get to release it everywhere. Yeah, it's coming up soon. I don't think we have an exact release date, but you're not going to have to wait too long. They're they're moving along. So, yeah, it's looking nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who's actually played through all of the Raiders um, of the North Sea Rune Saga campaign? Has anybody done that yet? If so, um, I'm envious because <laughs> I've played it as well, but I've only gotten to play through it once. I want to play through it again. Have you guys, have you, Scott and Danny, played through the whole thing? No. Uh, played through with Rune Saga stuff? Yes, I've done it once. Oh, yeah, Danny, you need to do it. It is super yes. fun. It makes yeah. each one of the games connect to each other. And so then you can play through the whole thing and see all of the different um, mechanics because each one's really separate. But the Rune Saga campaign does connect all three, which is neat. Yeah. So good stuff. We're going to make you do that when you get back, Danny. Play through everything? Sure. I still need to try all the expansions, actually. That's okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Fields of Fame and Hall of Heroes are really good as well. Um, they both add quite a bit to the game. So I recommend those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, cool. No, it'll be good. Direwolf has done a really good job. So all our other apps they've done, um, Lanterns, Lotus. They, of course, do the Renegade Companion app that has the Fuse Timer in there. And then, of course, all the Clank additional free downloadable content for Clank. So you can play Clank, all that bonus content. Um, that was really kind of cool. Like the Clank bonus content wasn't even originally part of the plan. They just did it and, and threw it in there. So, and I know people have been asking about more Clank content. They're working on it. Don't worry. It's coming. You're going to get, you're going to get more free bonus content, um, in a future <laughs> update. They are not abandoning that. There will be more stuff. So That's just exciting. Give, give them some time. They've got a lot of things that they're working on including the new Clank, uh, Acquisitions Incorporated legacy game. Legacy, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, they've got they've got a lot on their plate. So they'll get to it. Don't worry. They talked about that a little bit at PAX South as well, didn't they? 
they did. They were on the Penny Arcade panel, the surprise panel, and they got to talk about it. And uh, we announced their um, the Acquisitions Incorporated upper management clank pack, which has, <laughs> right? Four, yeah, it's a mouthful. Four, right, yes. <laughs> clank, Acquisitions Incorporated, upper man, wait, did I get it wrong? No, clank upper Legacy. Man <laughs> oh, Clank Legacy. Well, but this one isn't just for Legacy. The upper management pack is compatible with regular Clank. That is true. The official yeah. name of it is Clank Legacy Acquisitions Inc. Upper Management Pack but you can use it with regular Clank. No marketing person worked on that name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's going to strengthen Danny's fingers as she types it out, answering questions about it. That say was it. the main goal, actually. I shortened it too. Can, can you say it really fast? Let me hear how fast you can say it. Clank Legacy Acquisitions Incorporated Upper Management Pack. Well, that's pretty hey, good. Hey, yeah. that was pretty good. Right. <laughs> I impressed myself. Yeah. <laughs> Very you, nice. You deserve a drink of water now. <laughs> yeah, actually. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, that'll be really cool because you can play with all the characters. There's miniatures and then there's new decks. So you can play with those characters in regular Clank. And then later, I, when Legacy comes out, you can use them in Legacy too. I love asymmetric starting powers. And so having asymmetrical starting decks for Clank Legacy, I think it's going to be really fun. Yeah. Oh, we have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, how much app integration will Ack Inc. use? Well, what? Uh, Clank oh. Legacy Acquisitions Incorporated. Oh, it's, it's, it's a tabletop game. Um, I don't believe it has any major, doesn't, I don't believe it has any app integration that is required. If, right. any, if anything at all, it's a legacy game. You play it on your tabletop. So, but we're not really ready to start talking about legacy yet. That's a ways away. Mm -hmm. so hold all your questions. Until stay, tuned. Yeah, stay tuned. In a future radio episode, we'll have answers for you. But That's for now. Right. Wait until the future. Dire Wolf will be announcing all sorts of stuff, but like I said, we're, we're ways away. Focus on upper management. You don't even have that yet. So we have a Clank Facebook group as well. If you wanted to go make sure that you get all the updates, get notifications about it, that's a really good place to go to. Yep, for sure. You should join it. Oh, I like somebody in chat said the fuse timer is lovely. Good sarcastic robot. Well, thank you. We call, we call her Cranky Mary Poppins. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> it was before my time. Uh, I think some of the, when we were casting the voice actors, so I actually, I wrote the script for the Clank app, and mm. then Dire Wolf class, uh, cast the voiceover um, actress. And uh, I think the way I described it is the type of tone that we wanted was um, Mary Poppins meets GLaDOS from uh portal oh yeah yeah that's she's a good the, way to put right, it she's the ai computer that's always talking to you in portal uh-huh yeah, talking that, about the cake is that the one yes yeah yeah the one that talks about mm -hmm. the cake and basically uh, it several times tells you you should just kill yourself like you're awake <laughs> <laughs> you just... the cake is a lie that's right <laughs> yep so yeah they, they did a great job on that <laughs> that is pretty awesome. We're actually going to be showing off Fuse at PAX East if anybody is joining us there. That's going to be fun. And we'll have the app, we'll have all the music going and all that good stuff. So you can also be annoyed by Mary Poppins uh, on the app as well when she yells right. at you. <laughs> yeah, you can tell us if you think that description's accurate or not. Yes, yes. <laughs> And we're, we don't want to give away the details yet, but we're working on some sort of use event for Gen Con, right? Yes, I'm planning on it. Okay. Top people are working on it. <laughs> <laughs> Top technological people. That's right. IT. Oh, boy. Yeah, oh. No, that's pretty good. Yeah, so Fuse. We have plans for Fuse. Yeah, we're, whoa, we have, we actually have uh, a new kind of, slightly updated edition of Fuse coming in the future too. Yeah, we haven't shown off that artwork yet, but um, we do we do have something special coming. Yeah, yeah, we'll save it. They don't need to know now. It's 
All right, what else is going win. on? So we talked about PAX East, we got some exciting stuff, but our very next show is actually next month and Sarah's going to that one. Did you want to tell us about New York Toy Fair, Sarah? Yeah, so New York Toy Fair is a little bit of an oddball out in our industry because it's not the type of show like Gen Con or Origins where just anybody can go and hang out and uh, experience a regular consumer trade show. Um, New York Toy Fair is more for business professionals. It's a place where retail store owners, um, companies like publishers like us, big toy companies like Hasbro, all get together and do business for a weekend. So I'm gonna get to go to that and meet with some of our distributor partners, be showing off some super secret games that we haven't even announced yet, and just talk to talk to people about what we've got going on. So I'm working on making prototypes, making um, some playable copies of games that we have coming out in 2020, and just getting those all ready to go. Yeah, you get to go to the Power Rangers thing, right? I do. So Hasbro has this special event that they host for anyone who is working on a Power Rangers related product. And they will tell us all about their future plans, any big advertising things they have going on during next year and the rest of this year, I guess. And I don't exactly know what that'll be like yet, but I got invited. So I'm very excited to get to go. It, it'll, it'll be neat. I've gone to other ones for other big brands. Um, it's kind of cool. I was at a Marvel one once where they had uh, Kenneth Branagh came out and talked to us because it was before Thor and he was going to direct Thor. And he came out and did this whole thing and talked about Thor. And then they had some of the other cast members that were going to be in Thor come out and all that. And it was really cool. Like it wasn't a lot of us. There was maybe like 30 people. It's not like we were in some giant auditorium. It was just like 30 licensees. Oh, and, um, yeah, it was cool. They did it on the set. We were actually on one of the sound stages. And it was, um, they were filming Iron Man 2 at the time, I think. And uh, we were in Tony Stark's house. That's so, awesome. Yeah, so that was cool. We got to hang out in Tony Stark's house. Yeah. You know. Wow, that's pretty exciting. I don't get to go to Tony Stark's house, which is sad, but I do get to go to the Hasbro showroom, right? Uh, yes, that's where it is. It's the Hasbro showroom. So I want you to go in there and get me all the new Star Wars toy samples. <laughs> scoop them up and run out and bring them back to me. And don't tell anybody. Don't That's get the real off. reason you're going, Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> so Power Rangers fans, FYI, if I do that, it will be bad for you. <laughs> So right. I'm on your side, not Scott's side. I will probably not do that plan. That was the first thing I thought of when I got the <laughs> email from them. And I was like, oh, I'm not going to Toy Fair. I'll have to send Sarah instead. And yeah, this is the part where Scott calls you the enemy of fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> it's like there's no way Sarah is going to smuggle out all the new Star Wars toys for me. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely the enemy of fun. <laughs> uh, I originally got that name actually because I wouldn't let the employees at my store buy lightsabers that were three hundred dollars each, so that they could fight with them. <laughs> oh, well, so the Star Wars <laughs> enemy of fun continues. <laughs> yeah, true <laughs> Yep. <laughs> That's really cool. I didn't know about that. Yeah, that'll be fun. Well. Yeah. Yeah, though it is New York in February, so ha-ha. Uh -huh. uh, you know, we got about 12 inches of snow here today, and I was very, very excited. In fact, I went outside. I, I, this is a cheesy marketing thing. I took <laughs> Hokkaido outside and took pictures of it in the oh. snow because Hokkaido is all about going through the mountains and traveling around in the snow, so I thought it was appropriate. So I have some really cute pictures to send you, Danny. Of Yay. <laughs> I'm excited. Yeah, it's very fun. It was that nice, fluffy, soft snow. It's like super magical. It didn't look real at all. It was great. <laughs> well, so. you won't get you won't get super soft, fluffy snow in New York. You get dirty. No, <laughs> it's <laughs> true. Nasty, nasty street snow. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> street snow. It's not that bad. <laughs> But uh, yes, it will be it will be February in New York, so that's okay. That's, okay. that's right. 
Um, oh, that, yeah. That's shortly after Valentine's Day, right? It is, yeah. So it's the 16th through the uh, 19th, hmm. the show. So yeah, it should yeah. be fun. Yeah, the last couple of years, this is the first time in like decades that it doesn't conflict with Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. It almost always, always used to be over Valentine's Day, like every year. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's too bad too, because anyone who goes to the show, you can't bring kids or anything. It's just professionals that go. So you really probably would not have your Valentine's Day date at this, this event. <laughs> yeah. Not really the way it works. <laughs> It always really stunk too because so you're away on Valentine's Day if that's important to you. But the worst thing about it is that meant on Valentine's Day in New York City, every good restaurant was totally jam packed and booked. Oh no! So, so you couldn't even like go to dinner anywhere um, if you wanted to go somewhere halfway decent because everything is just packed. So you just go eat like street food, go get pizza or a hot dog. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, this Valentine's Day, Scott and I are, we have plans, but. <laughs> we do, that's true. What is I mean, happening? I don't know why you had to make that awkward, but. Sure. I was thinking about it, there wasn't a good way to say it, but I felt it still needed to be said. We're, we're spending the day together on Valentine's Day. Day. No. <laughs> the only way to say it. <laughs> we're well, going to go up to LA. For the yeah. afternoon. Yes, we will be at Geek and Sundry that day. Um, it's funny. Mm -hmm. I, I mentioned to Robin, I was like, oh, Geek and Sundry wants to wants to film on, on the 14th of February. And, and she's like, yeah, OK. And I'm like, well, that's Valentine's Day. And she's like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been married, Scott? Not, long enough that I get the, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I've been married long enough that my husband doesn't remember how long we've been married. So that's quite a while. <laughs> yeah. Well, for, for years, I would never be home for Valentine's Day because I would be at New York Toy Fair. Mm -hmm. And her birthday is also February 13th. So I, would, I, missed, I, missed, I missed her birthday for like five years straight one time. Oh, that's yeah. too bad. No, it's good. It's good for it. <laughs> <laughs> it causes causes no problems whatsoever. <laughs> this is the same problem I have with Gamma. That's when my husband's birthday is. It's always during Gamma. Yeah. So speaking of which, that's our next show. What are we what are we doing at that one? Oh, nothing. So, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> that's another not fun show. Uh, it's not a concern. <laughs> that's Here my favorite show. Are we distributors or players? Uh, it's not a player show. It's not open to the public. It's That's more true. business. <laughs> so we're giving seminars. We're giving out demo games. Uh, it's really educational. It's really valuable. Um, but yeah. most of you in chat probably won't be there. No. But unlike Danny, I like the Gamma Trade Show. <laughs> I think it's a lot of fun because we get to go talk to all these game stores that we only get to see once a year and designers go there and we do speed dating and all that. I think it's a good time. Danny, on the other hand, might be the new enemy of fun. Maybe she's enemy <laughs> of fun junior. <laughs> <laughs> that would be appropriate. Minion. Minion. Minion of enemy of fun. Hmm. <laughs> um, anyway. Yeah. I do love Gamma because I get to see all my store owner friends um, that have been helping and supporting me as a store owner for years and years now. So that's always just sort of like going home. I really like that about it. And I think as a store owner, I really enjoyed going to it too because it was when all of these companies would spoil their big plans for the rest of the year going up through usually Gen Con. So even as a player, if you're paying attention to the news on the industry sites during the middle of March, you're gonna find out all sorts of fun secrets and spoilers of things that are going to happen later. It's yeah. a pretty awesome event that way. And retailers get to get together and teach each other about how to run their stores better. And then they come home back to their friendly local game stores and they get all excited excited and run lots of events and do neat different stuff. So that's just always really fun, both as a store owner and as a player, I think. Yeah, this is really like the game industry's toy fair. It is, yeah. Yeah, so this is where we make big announcements and stuff. Like toy fair, nah, who cares? <laughs> they have 
<laughs> they have free snow there. We don't want to do anything. Oh, no. <laughs> Toy Fair is very much focused on bigger companies. Like if you're a Hasbro or a Lego or something like that, that's their big time to announce things and tell everybody what their plans are. But a lot of that show is also behind the scenes, sort of behind closed doors meetings to get ready for the year ahead. Whereas Gamma, I feel like is a little bit more open. For the most part, they aren't very secret announcements. We get to tell everybody. So that's pretty fun. Mm. You know, yeah. Board Games and Bourbon just joined us. Oh, welcome. <laughs> we were exchanging pet pictures last night. Oh. It's true. <laughs> uh, great. More about Sarah's dog. Let's move uh -huh. on. Uh-huh. Exactly. <laughs> Important work thing, Scott. <laughs> mm -hmm. So what else? Oh, we have Chinese New Year starts. What does that mean? It, it it's really good if you live in China. <laughs> it's a it's a big holiday where they're they're off for about three weeks. But what that means is for the game industry and pretty much anybody that makes stuff there, uh, everything shuts down for a solid three weeks. And really, it's about a month when you talk uh, consider ramping down and ramping back up again. So it's it's a pretty good month where nothing happens. It's true. It's super so, sad. <laughs> yeah, it makes us really sad, but it's fine. We plan for it and, and work work around it. Um, I wish we had a month off for New Year's here. I mean, then I would not be as jealous, but <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. But yeah, so it's, it's definitely a thing in the industry. So you might see people, other publishers talking about it or saying like, oh, this is out, but it's delayed Chinese New Year because even like uh, once it's, if it's not on the way, once uh, Chinese New Year starts, the ports are shut down, everything's done. So there's this big gap in shipments coming across the water and everything else. So like I said, we plan for it, we work around it, but it's just something that we have to deal with. So, you know, you might not see, um, you know, so you might see some delays out in the industry and things like that. Like we'll still have a steady flow of new releases coming in because we've gotten pretty good with dealing with it, but it's just an inconvenience you have to work around. But I don't blame them. It's their holiday, so they should take off for their new year. Yeah, it's really important to them, too. And I think that they take that much time off because they don't really take vacations during the year. And a lot of people don't live in their hometown and work in their hometown. And so they need to travel all the way back home and then spend a whole month with their family and then come back to where they work again. So I think it's it's really helpful for them to have that extra time. Yeah, for sure. It's all good. We're mm -hmm. fine. We will probably survive without infinite new games every single week, all the time. <laughs> yeah. um, we got a comment in chat that says, Scott, just take a month off. I'm sure Sarah can't destroy all the fun in a month. Oh. <laughs> that does sound like a challenge. <laughs> yeah, you've underestimated Sarah's capacity for destroying fun. <laughs> Remember, lightsabers. That's right. Yeah. yeah, only a monster could say no to those. That's right. <laughs> Crying children and lightsabers. Mm -hmm. No good. <laughs> doesn't take long to ruin all the fun. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It's oh, right. You're so proficient at it. <laughs> exactly. Oh, so yeah, we have a couple of events coming up. Um, what's our next consumer show we're going to be at? Oh. That would be PAX East. That's at the very, very end of March uh, in Boston. Last year it snowed, so uh, I'm stealing myself already. <laughs> It'll be like 40 degrees and snowing or something. <laughs> I know. It's cold. <laughs> Danny from the desert. Yeah, I'm from where it's 120 degrees half the year. Yeah. Okay. Very thin blood. Yeah, that's 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 normal, Sarah. Don't worry. Not everybody who lives in an igloo or a yurt. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally normal. I promise. Okay. So oh, yeah, so Pax East. Yeah, I have a trip to China before then. I'm gonna go. Ooh, that's exciting. Yeah, I'm gonna go see all the Power Rangers stuff as it's being packed up and all the final stuff. 
Leisha and I are going and we will oversee the final Power Rangers production. Hopefully I'm it will so be jealous. good and we don't have to hurt anybody. Uh -oh. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> went from vacation to pain very quickly. Do you yeah. call me the enemy of fun? <laughs> oh, yeah. As far as the factories are concerned, I'm no fun. <laughs> yeah, I bet not. Oh, boy. No, that'll be fun, though, to go and see it actually it real finished product because we've yeah. been working on this for so long now and we're all pretty excited to have that actually be a real thing i mean we've yeah. seen lots of pieces but have it all be together that'll be cool yeah we got tray samples while while you were here in town a week or cup two ago and all the trays look great and like not the final figures but like one of the first samples out of molds so we can test the molds and all those are looking great and we got dice the other day these are final these are final, final dice. These were the. Ooh. Do you hear them? No. Uh, they, sound, <laughs> they sound really good. <laughs> they don't sound like sandpaper or something. I don't, I don't know. No, what that they sound nice. Look, at, so I think so. Well, I told the people up in the Facebook group that I couldn't show them, but now Sarah can't stop me. So <gasps> what? I'm going to do it here, but just really quickly. Just to show you how awesome these are, I'm gonna stand, sit them next to a regular size die. Like a puny little pathetic. <laughs> That's yeah, a pretty, pretty awesome. big difference. Yes, they are big and chunky. They're awesome. So I love the rounded corners too. They look really nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's are the they regular. translucent or yes, they are translucent. So. That's lucky because we did that. You guys, <laughs> the backers, you guys helped us get to that goal. So that's good. Yeah. Let's see. Here are the blue dice. Here's some of the blue ones. Ooh, nice. Those are going to be amazing. Uh, we got, I've got some green. Oh, yeah. These are the green ones. These come in the, right, in the dice pack, all the different colors. How many, so how, does the, how do the dice work, Sarah? You get two of each in the extra dice pack? Yeah, yeah. So you'll get um, two of each different colors. So that'll help you if you just want to play with your Ranger colors, then you'll be able to do that. Um, I know some people even got a couple extra packs because there are cards where you might use more than two. But Power Rangers is all about sharing. So if you don't have all of your own color, you can always borrow some from one of your fellow Rangers. And you do get a couple dice in the starter box as well, enough that you should be able to use those if all its fails, you'll have enough. Oh yeah. Can you, you show the white ones? Yeah. Yeah, there's the white ones. Yeah, they're cool. Nice. They're 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 kind of um like frosted a little bit. They're really neat. So, so those are those are the ones that'll be in the basic regular box. Yeah, these will be in Heroes of the Grid. Awesome. Yep, they're awesome. I have got a pile of them. We're gonna bring them up to Geek and Sundry. Nice, yeah, so we also unlock that as a social stretch goal. So you you guys are gonna be doing something special with them? Yeah. On Valentine's Day. <laughs> On Valentine's Day, it's gonna be so romantic. <laughs> I'll nice. bring you a flower. Right. 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 Us and, and like, you know, 30 of our closest friends, like, you know, staffers <laughs> and grips and... <laughs> So it'll take you guys a little while, like that video will all be shot in one day, but then it takes Geek and Sundry a little bit of time to edit it. And then all of the other things that we have to do behind the scenes before that's ready. But um, we will post that as soon as we can, we promise. Yep. 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 Yeah, they'll, they'll work it into their schedule. I don't think it'll be too long after that. Yeah, yeah. we're filming two videos that day, actually. It's a whole long day production. Oh. Uh, right you'll get yeah. through it don't worry i know we have to get up at like 5 a.m <laughs> oh dear <laughs> danny yes do you know how to set your alarm i do okay I do. All right. very All right. successfully All right. if hey not, I'll Google, set my alarm <laughs> alexa 5 a.m thanks oh, you made it too easy <laughs> That's right. Oh, exciting. What What's next on our agenda? We have all sorts of fun things to talk about. Um, Scott, do you want to tell people how the search for our new people are going? Oh, uh, sure. So 
we recently posted that we're looking for two kind of part-time um, people. One would be a video editor because in our new studio, we're going to start to film more video content and be able to do playthroughs and unboxings and stuff like that. So we need somebody to help with editing. And then we're also hiring an another part-time position to help facilitate uh, game play test sessions, uh, playing our own games and testing prototypes, and then maybe even playing some other people's games and uh, for research and seeing what else is out there. So those two positions are up on renegadegames.com. You can go there under jobs, but I've been looking through stuff right now. I think we have a couple really good candidates and we'll probably have somebody in the next week or so. Um, but yeah, so look for more video content in the very near future. And if you're in San Diego, we will probably be putting out a call for people to sign up that might want to play test games and uh, we'll put together a little pool and then we'll invite people in based on our needs for playtesting prototypes. So there you go. So you'll actually get paid to play games. Is that what I'm hearing? Well, if you're hired for the position, you will get paid to play games. Other playtesters that we bring in will probably compensate in other ways. Pizza. Uh, yeah, maybe some swag, <laughs> renegade stuff that we've got laying around. So yeah, don't worry, we'll take care of you. Uh, Dan King is in chat and he says that you should hire him to run the studio. <laughs> oh, really? Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> is he moving Quality to San Diego production. Diego Dan, Dan. moving to San Diego. It's, it's pretty nice down there, you should do it. <laughs> yeah, it's hot as Arizona. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice, that's oh, fun. What else, what else? Um, we have a few games that have just released, and by a few I mean one, and we have a few games that are almost released coming out next month. Okay. So, uh, at the beginning of the month we released Kitty Paw, which is an older game, it's one of our evergreens, but we turned it into a super adorable, super romantic Valentine's Day version. You That's what you should bring us? to Scott. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, show it to us. Oh, it? Sarah, it's right behind you, actually. Sarah's a copy. I do. I do have a copy. Okay, let's see if I can reach it without destroying anything. I I love how cute this packaging is. So it looks a lot like Kitty Pot. It still has the adorable ears, all that good stuff. But then when you open it up, you can use the space in here. There's a little extra spot where you can write a Valentine. So instead of giving chocolate this year or flowers or something that's just gonna be consumable, why not give a game? You can write your little note and then fold it all back up and put this, give this to your Valentine on Valentine's Day. So yeah, there you go. It's so cute. Yay. I can get over it. <laughs> <laughs> it's very adorable. I really like the way this turned out. It's um, by one of our friends in Taiwan. He does a lot of, all of the um, really cute little games that we have like this and Doggy Go, Shiba Inu House. And he's a really good engineer. All this paper craft stuff is actually not that easy to do, but he does a great job of figuring out how to make that work. Like this, we said, hey, we wanna do a Valentine's Day theme. This is our idea. And he just whipped this out super fast. It was awesome. Yeah, he's very, very talented. He's awesome. Yeah, that was that was pretty neat to see. So yeah, that just barely came out and should be at friendly local game stores now. Nice. Just in time. For what, February. Else? what else? Tell us, Danny. What else? Okay, so February is a busy month for us. We've got four games coming out. Uh, on February 6th, which is the date of our next radio episode, two Wednesdays from now, we have Ray Colt, which is finally releasing. Can't wait, that's gonna be so good. I love Uwe Rosenberg. Every single one of his games has just been amazing. And like Agricola got me into big heavy Euro games. That was yeah, the same. very first one that I played. I immediately called my entire family and told them they had to play this game with me. That was a terrible idea because they did not <laughs> understand modern board games. <laughs> but I learned my lesson. <laughs> and all the rest of his games, Feast for Odin, um, even his smaller ones like Cottage Garden, just been fantastic so 
that one. And uh, Reichel is no exception. It's a really much more accessible game than some of his bigger ones, but it has tons of replayability. The cards that you can purchase and then share between people, there's a ton of them and you only play with a few in every game. So those really add a lot to mix it up. And there's a campaign for it, which is really neat. Yeah, there's a story mode, which is something he hasn't done before. I haven't gotten to play it yet, but I'm very, very intrigued. Yeah, I'm actually waiting for my copy to arrive because I had a copy that was using it at some shows and then I had to send it off to some media people. So I haven't had a chance to play through the campaign mode yet either. Mm -hmm. Oh, but. well, I have plenty of them here. <laughs> the, the like 50 that we were had air shipped to uh, BGG Con that never made it there because I think it was us and, and Board Game Geek. We were in the same boat. So, yeah, with their advent calendars. Yeah, the advent calendar and Reichholt were made at the same factory. So we shipped them together to get them there to BGG Con, and both the advent calendar and Reichholt never made it. They got uh, held up in customs. So then they were rerouted to my house. <laughs> <laughs> they're big, they're heavy big. cases. Yeah, they're and they're huge. They're massive because they're not the real cases that, was, that went to distribution. They were special just for this. So we've got... I've got all plenty of Reichholt, Sarah. You want me to send you one? <laughs> you know, I actually just barely got my copy, so I'm okay for now, but thanks. <laughs> all right. Um, I also actually just last night played Trajan again. Ooh. I've had that game for a really long time. Um, it's by Stefan Feld, another one of my favorite designers. And so I actually got that on the table again this week for the first time in a while. And I had completely forgotten how much I love that game. There's so many good parts of it. The Rondel is a really unique, cool mechanic. It's in a few other places. Um, recently I played Crusaders. It also has a Rondel mechanic, which I really enjoy. But it's basically Moncala, but with more fun stuff going on. And all the different areas that you're trying to deal with all at the same time, it feels very much like a traditional Steffenfeld game. Um, but they're all manageable. I feel like you can do everything you want to do, which is really, really exciting for me. So Sarah, I assume you played the new version of the game, the, our version. <laughs> I actually did it. I don't have a copy <laughs> of the new one yet. You don't have the new one? Oh, I thought, what happened to your old one? Didn't you destroy well, it in some very creative way? <laughs> so my original, original version of the game, I brought with me on vacation and I didn't have enough room in my suitcase for all the boxes. So I took everything out and I put it in bags, but the bag that all of the tiles and cardboard pieces went into ended up in my laundry because it was a cloth bag. It just got mixed in. And so it went through the washing machine. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> so I luckily got a new copy of the game <laughs> and uh, that's the one that I played last night was the, the old new copy. But I am really anxiously waiting for a new one because when I was going through the rules of my edition from 2011, I realized that all of the updates that we have in our version aren't there. And there's nothing that's different about the game. There's just a lot of really nice clarifications. Like when you draw a card, you replace it. That wasn't in the original version of the game, but it was intended to be. So all these little tiny tweaks that just make it so much easier to set up and get going. That's good. So don't wash any more games. <laughs> I almost did this again recently because I went on another vacation. <laughs> and we also had all of our games mixed up. So I had to be very careful not to do that again. So, so what you're saying is your game collection, if this was Toy Story and your games come alive, come to life <laughs> at night when you're not in the room, they all know that every time you go on vacation, as far as they're concerned, a vacation is like a murder. Yeah. Losing <laughs> sacrifice. Okay. She comes in and she picks the games, and all the rest of the games are like, no, oh, we'll never <laughs> see them again. It's so true. I did break my copy of Great Western Trail trying to fit it into my suitcase this time. I split the side of the box. <laughs> right. so, so, all, so, as far as your games are concerned, the word vacation either. Yes. Okay. Just checking. <laughs> Enemy uh, of fun. <laughs> Jack in chat has a pro tip for you, Sarah. He says, just don't do laundry. Buy all new clothes. You won't have that problem. 
Awesome. <laughs> I just need to keep going to game conventions and buy a new game shirt. It's like my Genki Mono one. Hey. There you go. hey. <laughs> That'll solve all of my problems. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, uh, what else is coming up? What's in February? Um, well, so Trajan releases February 20th. I don't think we said that. So end of the month. Okay. And in between February 13th, we have two games releasing. We have Hokkaido, which we talked about briefly. It is the follow-up to Honshu. So Honshu is a trick-taking game. You're over and underlying city cards and trying to get points in a variety of ways. And it's one of my absolute favorite games. Hokkaido takes that card lane city building aspect and uses card drafting instead. And it is even better, in my opinion. It is so good. <laughs> I do love the card drafting part of it. I think that's really smooth and elegant the way that it's implemented. Mm -hmm. yep, and good. you also add terraforming tiles. So uh, with extra resources that you generate through your city, you can spend them to place tiles over the unusable spaces of your city and use those to generate points instead. So there's just more to think about. I'm so excited for it. <laughs> When I first played Honshu, I was really surprised by how much game there was in such a small box. I took it also on vacation with me, but it survived. <laughs> and this is like all three of the vacations I've ever been on in my life, I think. <laughs> but um, uh, we played it on the train in Germany a whole bunch. And I was super impressed by how much you could play in a small area and how many different strategies there were. And I completely agree. I think that Hokkaido adds even more to that. And it's in the same size box, so it'll fit on your shelf. Yep. Yeah. Don't kill Honshu or Hokkaido, Sarah. I did put Hokkaido <laughs> in the snow today, so I don't have a great track record. <laughs> Actually, Sarah, I don't know if you remember, you gave me the copy of Honshu that I own at a toy fair two or three years ago. Oh, that's awesome. I didn't remember that. That's funny. Yeah. You <laughs> took it out of your bag of secrets, and you're like, this is coming later this year. And you ran off into the sunset without another word. What? Nice. Mm -hmm. You gave a secret game to Danny before, it did. before she was a renegade? Oh, I knew she was a renegade at heart. I could tell. Uh, <laughs> mm, all right. All right. That's a can of worms. All right. <laughs> the other thing that's really seen on February 13th is. Um, Kids on Bikes, Strange Adventures, Volume 1. Another mouthful. Oh, it's shorter <laughs> than the other one, though. Don't worry. <laughs> there are a few exclamation points. Uh, so yeah, this one is a whole bunch of really great content that was originally in the Kids on Bikes Deluxe version. And so now all of that's in here, along with some other little fun things as well. Right, Scott? Yep, yep. There's new content, too. So we should have samples of that pretty soon. Maybe for the next show, we can show a little preview of it. But yeah, we some, yeah, definitely. Some advanced, advanced copies, they're already on the way, so. We I think that's that. in the warehouse. It releases in just a couple weeks. Uh, yeah, well, then where's my advanced copy, damn it? <laughs> Mine's on the way. Mine's getting here this week. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know what happened. I don't have one either, but it is our warehouse. It's shipping to distributors now. All right, we need a system. We're going to talk about this later. <laughs> Actually, I do have a system. I just don't think you're in it. Oh. it oh, no problem. We have a payroll system, too. Let me check. <laughs> <if we're in> <laughs> <it>. <laughs> oh. Bam. Man. <laughs> um, I think I'm going to be on Scott's side for this one. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's all that's happening in February. Okay. That's nice. a lot. That's plenty. It's a lot. Okay. Do we have a contest? Are we doing a contest tonight? We do have a contest, and it is for a copy of Ray Colt. Oh, good. Can Ooh. I ship one of the ones that are here in San Diego? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, good, good plan. <laughs> okay. This is a speed contest. So whoever says the Correct answer first in chat will be the winner winner. Oh, they have to type it though. Don't yell into your microphone. <laughs> Yelling is futile. Please type it so we can see your answer. Okay. Are you ready for the question? Yes. 
Okay. Name all five vegetables that you're planting in Raycold. One, two, three, go. All five of them. All five. They have to type them all in the same. You don't have to type in order. There is a hierarchy. I don't care about that. Right. But they need all five. Oh. Uh, wow. That was hold on. Let me check my answer sheet. <laughs> <laughs> Steve and Clark, you are the winner. That was super fast. That was really fast. Now, follow up question Have you eaten all of these vegetables in the last month? <laughs> Hope the answer is yes. They're good for you. Oh, yeah. I've eaten all those. I've eaten most of those in the last week. I've not eaten mushrooms, but I've eaten yeah. all of the other ones. I've eaten two of those today. Why do you hate, <laughs> why do you hate vegetables, Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> I like vegetables. They're delicious. <laughs> all right. Well, um, cool. So yeah, Stephen, send us an email at customer service at renegadegames.com with your shipping address and what you want, which is a copy of Raycolt, and we'll ship it out to you. Yay! So I did see somebody in chat that joined us late asking if we had talked about Proving Grounds tonight. We have not talked about Proving Grounds tonight. We will have that in a future episode as we get a little closer to the April release, right? Mm -hmm. so, yeah, mm -hmm. so releasing in April, don't worry, we will have more soon. But it's looking yeah. really, really good. It's in production. It's one of those things that's in production but won't be finished until uh, New Year is over. So We talked We've about it. Sorry, you can go ahead, Sarah. Oh, we've seen some samples of it, um, but they weren't finished. Yeah. Yep, yeah, but we're getting close. It'll be on time. It better be on time. Fingers <laughs> crossed. Um, but we talked about it at length in last week's episode. So you can go back and check. We also have a Facebook group for all of our solo games, which is only Proving Grounds at the moment. But you can go ahead and join and keep up to date on all the news as we post it. Right, but the intent is this is a new series, so we're gonna have other solo games in the future, and eventually uh, this the solo hero series will be aligned. So hopefully you like this one, but um, the intent also isn't to just do the same type of game every time. The only thing that they really have in common is that they're solo games. The next game in the line will most likely be, it actually is, entirely new mechanics, something totally different, but you play it solo, and it will be narrative driven. So that's those are the two common things, narrative driven and solo play. Awesome. So, yeah, there you go. So we did talk about proving grounds a little bit. There we go. <laughs> right. Nice, nice. Any other chat questions? Mm, I don't think so. I think um, I covered it. They've eaten a bunch of veggies, yeah, but I good. don't see any questions. Oh, no. man. Now they can all go play Sunday Split, where you get ice cream and veggies. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> nice. so, okay. Yeah. We will be yeah. back in two weeks on February 6th. If you didn't win a copy of Ray Colt, that is the day you can get your own copy. It'll be available in local stores. And you can tell us all about it at 5 p.m. Pacific time or 8 p.m. Eastern time. Okay, that's cool. Oh, so without giving it away, we have an announcement next week. Are we announcing something new? We are. On which day? On Tuesday. So on Tuesday, tune in to the internet, and we are going to announce something on Tuesday. Oh, you're both making me so nervous. <laughs> yeah. I started it. That's right. It's all Scott's fault. Now we said it. Can't take it back. <laughs> oh dear all right no fun for either of you till tuesday <laughs> <laughs> all good okay nice. cool so february 6th tune in tuesday are we done we're done i think we're done we're done awesome right. thank bye. you everyone have fun thanks. play games bye, -bye. bye.